Because there's a call to action, right? There's a call for kingy and nonviolence. There's mm-hmm. all there's a call for that. But then right now, no. No, 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 because people get out of hand. Hello, everybody from the DMV and beyond. Welcome to Positive Voices. Today, we are here to talk about HIV with a very, very, very special guest. My name is Malachi Stewart. Hey, and I'm T. Pearson Hall. And we are here with somebody that you all know, unless you're living under a rock. If you've seen Pose before, if you haven't seen Pose before, I'm going to let my guest introduce himself. Ryan. Hi, um, my name is Ryan Jamal Swain, uh, actor, activist, singer, dancer, healer, all of the, you know, all of those multi-hyphenate. Um, and I was on a, you know, a little show called Pose. Oh. I played Damon Richards Evangelist. Just a little show. Just a little, a little show. show. You know, a little some some. Nothing um, major. No, um, and a really, really incredible show about the 1980s and mm-hmm. specifically just black what black and brown people did to forge community and also ballroom culture. Um, also just, I guess... You know, being on Positive Voices specifically, Hello. Um, just being in the space to talk about mm-hmm. what it means to live a life with the virus Ooh. and not for the virus. Mm-hmm. I think that that is um, a really big caveat. But um, I was on there with the likes of Billy Porter, MJ Rodriguez, India Moore, and Angelica Ross, Haley Sahar, Delon Burns. I got to I gotta do all of them. Yeah. And, all uh, the yes. icons. And all, the, yes. all, all of them. And... Um, yeah, and so then I've just been here doing the work on and off the screen. I think that that's really been the best thing is just to be in service. Yeah. And this show just kind of made space for that. So, yeah, that's what I'm here. Thank you. Yeah, no, we thank do. you for having me. Yeah. We do. No, thank you for being here. We're really yeah. honored to share space with you. And we really want to talk about the work that you're doing on and off screen. Yeah. Um, so let's start with on screen. Okay. Um, a lot of us were introduced to you again on Pose. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw your character, Damon. And... I want to say one thing about Pose. Mm-hmm. For It was the first time in my inner circle of Butch Queens, we felt like we had always seen characters on TV where we saw bits and pieces of ourselves. That opening scene with the character Damon and his mother yeah. and being put out, I remember being on like a conference call with my friends and being like, every part of that character I identified with, every part of that wow. scene I identified with. It was yeah. the first space we did not care about any of the critiques that they, there was in the show because it was like, this is the first time we saw ourselves and it forced the world to see us. Yeah. yeah. Because so many people, so many people, mamas called them like, okay, I get it now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get how, my mama called me, she saw the first episode and called me and apologized. Like, I don't think oh, I made wow. space for you in the beginning. I thought I was doing a good job, but I, oh, I, I, I saw a little bit of myself good. in mama. Yeah. And so I wanted to acknowledge that. What was it like in that moment playing that role, studying for that role, maybe even your own experiences? Did you feel the weight of it in that moment? You know, I did. Um, I think for me, you know, the crazy thing about it is I think that we're all in the kind of vicinity of millennial, gen, you know, whatever the case may be. And I never had a Damon on my TV screen. And I think that there's this term called symbolic annihilation where if you don't see yourself represented, you then thus don't feel important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I had to find myself in shows that with characters that didn't look like me, Mm -hmm. didn't have my same socioeconomic class, didn't have anything. And so for me to be able to tap in, number one, with Ryan Murphy, who I've seen do the likes of Glee and American Horror Story and et cetera, mm-hmm. but this is supposed to be a, a piece specifically about black folk, right. black and brown people from this, you know, white, you know, prolific showrunner. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just like, wow. And then also something that's close to my heart. You know, the first time that I actually even saw anything about ballroom or ballroom adjacent was my senior year at Howard University. I did a a one man show about this like fictional drag queen of the Stonewall riot. So I looked at every piece of you know um, queer culture mm-hmm. um, source material from before and after Stonewall, and that was the first time that I saw Paris is Burning. Wow! And that was the year before I got my job. Oh. So there was already something manifesting inside and also in the spirit of like, this is moving in the direction. But to answer your question specifically, I think doing that work really just reinforced what it means to be, what it means to live a life and show up for your life. Mm -hmm. I think that Damon is one of those characters where his softness is what you see first, his vulnerability, his kindness, his openness. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I think as queer and black folk and just um, people of the LGBTQIA plus community in specifics, Sometimes we forget our softness Mm -hmm. because our truth sometimes doesn't warrant our safety. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes it doesn't warrant our safety. 
Um, and so being able to have him be a part of my tapestry and also a big part of it, like my first job out of school, yeah. like a big major way really enforced and reiterated the, the meaning of being true to yourself, mm-hmm. um, true to your spirit, true to your space. And I hope that that permeated outside into people's homes. Um, and I think it did. I think we did something. It showed it. It sure did in my <laughs> yeah. house. I can tell you that um, because when I first started watching, yeah. right, the when it first came on, first of all, it was the talk of everything. Yeah. Right? Of y'all watch your post, post coming up. I was going to say, see, we wait for season three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, from a fan Well, season three is out, but season four is not it's coming. Season we four are done. Yeah, we, yeah we, we done. But it's not like okay. it was canceled or anything. <laughs> It was just yeah. like, I think, you know, when you get to a point where you just realize that you made something really, really good yeah. and we are done with it. Yeah, but I mean, I think for the storylines were Who really knows? Who knows? well portrayed, right? Yeah. And so when you talk about the softness of Damon, I think that yeah. that really hit home because when you just mentioned about the, sometimes you have to change. Yeah, kind of your outward appearance, yeah. right? Because you have to appear much stronger mm-hmm. um, depending on how you present, yes. right? And so when I heard you say that, I was like, huh, that did make sense. And so Damon wasn't the fighter. Well, you know, he tried to raise his voice. <laughs> had a little, you know, had, had that had little, little tantrum or two. You know, so, little poor team. Yeah. Don't put baby in the corner, though. Yeah. Ever. Don't have those. Please, don't. But I, I love how the writing, right, yeah. and even with the energy that you portrayed as Damon, of just the community mm-hmm. that that surrounded and like the community in the home. Yeah. Right. And so from when we talk about experience and we talk about like the coming out or mm-hmm. having a status or what mm-hmm. have you, I think it was very powerful to portray mother, mm-hmm. right? As the you're not going out there and work no tracks yeah. and you're not gonna do this and I'm gonna go get you in school yeah. when the biological parents lost sight of this is my son. Right, and this is who he is, and this is what he wants to do. But she's like, no, you're going to dance. But, you know, I think there's something, and I didn't really realize it in the moment, the power of the radicalization of being normal, being yeah. a normal child, having extraordinary circumstances mm-hmm. happen to you. Because in the show, you know, you have so many characters that are six inches off the ground. You yeah. have people that are literally, you know, sex doing sex work, yeah. um, living with virus, being able have alcoholism, substance abuse, et cetera, et cetera. But then you have this one particular character who beyond the composite of what he's been going through mm-hmm. is just his normal little black boy that just wants to live and just be. Mm-hmm. And just be. And, and just, just be. be. How yeah. oftentimes do we get the chance to just be? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm going to be so honest with you. While I was shooting it, I had imposter syndrome. No. Because I just felt like everybody had this particular color. Okay. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I know exactly what who Praytel is. Oh, I know exactly who Blanca is. But... But that also speaks to, I guess, the trauma bond that we as black people have. Hello, somebody. Where we can't see ourselves yeah. beyond our circumstances yeah. and really just be like, there is actual power in normalcy, in being normal. Mm-hmm. And because all of us are not, I mean, black folk, are, I think, I'm not in a hotel, but I do believe that we are the chosen people, how I'm some ever. <laughs> um, I do believe that in my normalcy, I'm still extraordinary. Yes. You yes. know? Yes. And I think that it took me a while for me to really gauge and understand the power of what it means to just see a normal, normal, no, normal young man, normal black young man, without all the different yes. dramatic instances, Labels. how powerful that yeah. is on television, yes. right? Thankful, thank and, you. Yeah. And I would add to that, like the character really showed that even in the vulnerability, mm-hmm. yeah, that there's so much strength. Mm-hmm. But Absolutely. I, the irony to you saying that, like, it was hard for you to see yourself. The mm-hmm. reason we all saw you was because of. The normalcy was because of I the vulnerability. Think, I appreciate that. We yeah. all remembered the part of ourselves before, and, I, and we'll get into the character's progression, but it's like before the world happened, yeah. before I had to take an account for what my sexuality mm. was, before I had to show up and give an explanation mm. and an apology, mm-hmm. I was just a person that wanted to be seen, that wanted to dance. Before somebody told me, boys, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for us us femme black gay men, it's like before we you know, talk about any of the things that we were exposed to, before that, there was a person, and a lot yeah. of us were hardened by life. Like we didn't have the privilege of walking around. Absolutely. Like you understand why certain characters showed up the way they showed up, you mm-hmm. know, because you have to. You didn't, the world wasn't safe. It was, wasn't a safe place to navigate. Mm-hmm. And it leads me to the irony. I understood that the parents 
that Damon's parents thought they were going to like, I'm, we're going to cut you off and that's going to make you do right. <laughs> and they actually just exposed him to danger. Right. Next Absolutely. thing you know, you're on the piers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Next right. you know, we see you on the piers about to now do things that not only expose you to physical danger, but we're talking about high risk sexual behavior. Yeah. We're talking about survival sex. We're talking Absolutely. about things that was the reality of queer people that alphabet mafia back then mm-hmm. and still very and much still is now. today. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that as a person who is an advocate? Do you what in the moment like was that something that because I saw Paris is burning too late in life, mm-hmm. um, and that was the first thing I thought about. So many people that was like twelve, thirteen. You like where is your parents at? Like mm-hmm. where y'all? Mm-hmm. Why does not nobody? Yeah. No one know where they thirteen year old child. You this is my ball? sister. You remember yeah. the two boys? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Just like, you know, I think as an advocate, you know, you have to stand in the margins. I think you have to stand with and in the margins instead of being outside of it. Mm-hmm. For oftentimes, so oftentimes of my queer experience, it was about getting to a goal. But then when I was a part of a bigger conversation and had to truly be kind of coerced in, oh, no, 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 now this is your your artivism is your activism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was this bit of just like, wow, I'm really a, I'm really someone's, I hate the, I hate the term role model. One of my friends gave me a better term. Because role model is stagnant. It was another thing. It's, anyway, um, somebody that was influenced or just had some type of space for folk. Um, you know, having... This is going to be a little contradictory to what I've just said. You know, having Damon as the soft, you know, young, queer black boy also is not kind of... It, that's not a generalization of how we all are. Right. Yeah. And I think that I had to educate myself on the ways in my how my intersections don't happen in the other you know part of the alphabet mafia mm-hmm. and how do I challenge my ignorance and my own privilege into being more understanding about someone else's reality hmm, come on now. I think that um I mean Lulu veracity in the show play by Haley has this beautiful line about we all want somebody to make us feel superior hmm. especially in the alphabet mafia right mm-hmm. and so often in that, our trans sisters and brothers are at the bottom of the totem yeah, pole. For sure. Yeah. Right? And so yeah. there's no agency because that's not my problem. Let me move away from that. Yeah. Let me not advocate. Let me not show up in the margins. Let me not sh- show up. Be a co-conspirator. I don't believe in allyship. Mm-hmm. I believe in co-conspiratorship. You're going to be with me right next to me. Mm-hmm. Not on the other side being like, I can. this is a special curricular activity that I can jump in and jump yeah. out of. Yeah. You have to be with me. Velcro. Velcro, honey. <laughs> Stuck together. Stuck together. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, I, I think that that really was the uh, the challenge for me, first and foremost. And then mm-hmm. I accepted the challenge. You know, the thing, the thing about advocacy is that the first A of that is awareness. Mm-hmm. Awareness. Then after that, it's education. After that, it's listening. And then also is just is at true advocacy, standing in the margins, being having this moment because we come from an apathetic space where because it's not happening to me, it ain't it don't matter. It don't matter. Yes. But I think that when we talk about when we talk about true co-conspiratorship, you got to be with me. Pull up, like Rihanna said. Hello, Please what you say? Up. That's what I'm talking about. Pull up, Period. It's the pull up for me. Yes, it. But no, I, I think yeah. that was what it challenged me to do was just pull up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder how many people struggle to do that because they feel like no one pulled up for them. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, we're sitting on we're sitting in the aftermath of, you know, a young queer 28-year-old man being killed for yeah. exhibiting his black joy through yeah. through dance. Yeah. Yeah. Because because home. because that yeah. type of joy <clears throat> surpasses surpasses any hate that we have on this world. So you have to try to contain it, especially in the year of our Lord, 2023, is just like this. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah. My joy doesn't provide you comfort, and that's not my issue, but you shouldn't be. What did Rashonda say? She said, violence... Never mind. No, I'm not going to say that one either. Yeah. Who just say no, 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 let me sip, sip, let me yeah, sip by a little drink real quick. But with I, water. I definitely agree with you. I think mm-hmm. that the that recent right yeah. trauma for us has kind of brought a lot of things to to the light yet yeah. again. Yeah. Right? Within our own community, yeah. within the alphabet mafia, right? As well as just the outward 
general public who mm-hmm. has no eye or understanding. Yeah. Right. And so to have that recent death for no reason. Yeah. But simply somebody minding somebody else's business. Mm-hmm. That is basically minding what it comes. Somebody else's business. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. That's what it seems He's like. He's minding it just keeps his going business too. at the pump, and you come minding somebody else's business and has something to say so much that it costs someone their life, and not even just the external the. Not external, the extra trauma. Yeah. The best friends and the people that was there just buying some candy, you know, and all of those different things. And so for me, it's like you say, it's 2023, right? Yeah. And so, like, when do we stop having these stories of examples? Yeah, we the type of right? tired that sleep can't remedy. Yeah. Okay? Ain't no sleep, ain't no Amen. nap long enough Hello. for this. We one. are that type of tired. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna bring Rashonda up because she said violence is always the answer when the question is, can you put your hands on me? First Ooh, and foremost. That's a good one. Hello. That's a good one. And I think that what has to happen, because there's a call to action, right? There's a call for kingy and nonviolence. There's mm-hmm. all there's a call for that. But then right now, no. No, 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 because people are getting out of hand. Out of hand. But anyway, I'm going to leave that Alabama there. Alabama showed it us, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Birmingham, Alabama. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, Montgomery, Alabama mm-hmm. specifically. Mm-hmm. A little further away from where I'm from, but mm-hmm. it's okay. You know, we appreciate you saying what we can't always say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm the guest. I'm the guest. Let me, let yes, me just, let me just. Let the guest let, say let it. Just, y'all, but <clears throat> y'all heard it. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I want to talk about, one of the major things that I thought was mm-hmm. important to bring up on this show particularly because yeah. it is positive voices and we do yeah. particularly cater to everyone but particularly people living with HIV. Mm-hmm. Um, a scene where we talk, we talk a lot about disclosure yeah. around here in various ways, disclosure to family, disclosure to friends. You, Your character developed, went on to, you know, um, date someone who had to share with them that they may have had a potential exposure to HIV. Yeah. Now, of course, it was a different time, right? Yeah. But the response might not have been much different than what we hear people say mm. here on the show and anecdotally we experience in the community. Yeah. Um, what was it like preparing for those scenes in that mm. particular role? Like, okay, you have to be this person who someone is coming to you and telling you, I... I may be positive. I may have exposed you. And we know what the girls give Mm -hmm. sometimes in those moments. What was it like preparing for that? I think that, you know, um, I'm going to keep it brief. I think with that particular scene, I kind of tussled with that because that was one point where I was just like, ooh, this is real. I mean, there has to be a a sliver of real life happening because if it was all, you know, Damon Kumbaya said this, Mm -hmm. hugged him made space for him, mm-hmm. didn't see the hurt, didn't see the anger, that wouldn't be real, real life. Estate, yeah. yeah. Um, but for me, and specifically my team, and specifically Delon, who plays Ricky, um, we talked in Ignazium about the care that we just had in between the takes, because that's a, you know, that it's real. I know that it's just, it's just really, really real. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the the scenes that proceeded after that, yes. the whole argument and the whole announcing somebody's status when them when them not being there, not right, but again, real life, real life, yes, real life. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just handled that space with a lot of care, and I remember getting the script and just being like, "Oh, we're going there." I mean, the, the the particular episode was called Revelations. Mm. I mean, there was a double entendre happening, right? There was Revelations because Damon was um, graduating from the dance program, mm-hmm. but then also there were Revelations happening for every character. Yeah. You get a piece, you get a yeah, piece, piece, you get yeah. a piece, you know. Baby was like, I am done being in the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to speak up for myself. But then also in that space of speaking up for myself, it got messy. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. that... On the flip side, as me as the actor, bringing truth to that is my job. Mm-hmm. Being able to think about how people are going to take it, that's not my job. Mm-hmm. And so how messy it got, there was back and forth. They wanted to change. It was, it was, they were like, do you think Damon should be doing this? People are going to not like that he does this. Character. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, I ain't going to lie, I was at home like, Damn, damn, but damn, Damon, damn. It but it's no, the truth. Because yes. I was waiting for the turn. Yeah. Too. I was like, at yeah. some point, the turn is going to come. Yeah, and because, I fall hard for that because they were just yeah. like, no, Ryan, do you think that this? All the producers were like, do you th-? I said, yes. Yeah. And it was time. Yeah. You know, this is, we're seeing an evolution of a character go from not having or not feeling like he has agency for himself to now transitioning into that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was powerful. So, and I think yeah. it shows the evolution. Right from we talk about the evolution of the character, yeah. but like the it comes on with 
at home, mm -hmm. mom and dad, mm -hmm. and like real churchy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Everything's real churchy. Mm -hmm. And then to go from like this upbringing to like, but this is who I am. Yeah. And then it's a get out. Mm -hmm. But you used to come at home to a two home, you know, two parent household. A nuclear family, as, as, as the, Ameri you know, the American trifecta And now likes to call you it. had to create what a new family looks like yeah. that helped you as the character, right? Help Damon thrive. But like conversations, as we just kind of brought up, is why we're having this conversation with you of like the importance of, you know, the status and mm -hmm. the conversations that need to happen, somewhat taboo somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but when we talk about Ricky, right? One of my, mm -hmm. I, I love Ricky. We love too. him. Oh, yeah, because Ricky definitely <laughs> gave a different. Persona, a nice what little people, fever. Yeah, yeah. Of what a different people would color. assume a yeah. gay black boy looks like, mm -hmm. right? So he gave a different look to that. Mm -hmm. But so when we talk about preparedness and we talk about just the the conversation of community and positive, um, moving forward with positive diagnosis, Ricky had was positive, you weren't. Mm -hmm. But somewhere in there, right? It was a uh, we're in the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, it was a lapse of judgment, mm -hmm. right, of using protection amidst all of the conversation, yeah. right, of all of the conversation that everyone had to protect Damon. Yeah. Um, but also, it was so much loving love for Ricky. Yes. At the same Precisely. time. Precisely. And so when you prepared for that, yeah. right, as, as you reflect in that character and like, this is really what I have to do, mm -hmm. did you see a fear for your own self in that? No, you know, naturally, I think for me, I'm a Pisces specifically. I, I go, I come from a non judgmental space mm -hmm. with anything that I do. And I think that's just been a gift that I was given just, just off the cuff. But what we were set, setting up in that particular relationship was a zero discordant relationship, okay. right? Where one, one part of the, the, the conglomerate is positive and the other one is not. Yes. And I do believe that Damon, in a perfect world, if we could have kept going and could have seen them, the status wasn't wasn't the issue. I think it was more so just the lying and the and the space. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as as we continue to talk about this, and I think this is a good segue, you know, destigmatizing the yes as oh, well, yes, right? I'm glad you brought that. Yes. Like being able to, because I was thinking about it on my way here. I was just like, how do we bring this up? I find that oftentimes when we get to sharing, um, when folks are living with, with the virus or just so happen to be, um, there's this kind of halt in, in, in thinking that people can live full lives, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's this idea of shame and guilt that every time that I bring it up in a relationship or this particular or whatever, that there's going to be a sense of halt pausing. Yeah. And I say desensitizing the yes because there's a full life on the other side of that yes. Come on now. There is. There's yes. a full one. Yes. A huge one. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we talk about destigmatizing and um we just celebrated our first zero 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 stigma day, July twenty first. Mm. Okay. Um, you know, the one specifically. And it's just like we talk about stigma and we talk about that, it's like okay. We've gotten to the point of preventative care. We've mm -hmm. talked about that. We were doing the science and everything. But if every time that someone that is living with um, has to disclose and they have to always feel this sense of shame and guilt, that's not, that's not, that's not moving in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, what does it look like to be able to destigmatize the yes and say, you know what, okay, and, and let's move forward. Mm -hmm. How do we normalize that, mm. you know, in putting the things in together, like making sure that you're healthy, making sure that everything is happening, but also taking away, not only for the person that's disclosing, but also the person that is also in this partnership, yeah. this sense of shame and guilt. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it, it, dis, it discredits the life that could be lived and shall be lived yeah. beyond that, right? Yeah. It gives this kind of composite of well, I guess now I have to move in this direction or move in this way. But I think the key of all of this, this stigmatization is just like being able to still show up for your life. That's it. And continue to show up for your life. Unapologetically. Unapologetically. Yeah. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think a part of that work 
is that there there does have to be or always is necessary to have people. I don't think that people owe anybody. Anything. I don't. I don't think so. I don't either. think people owe anybody. Is an invitation. Share. Tell them about their business. It's an invitation. But yet I'm very public and, yeah. uh, and I've been for a long time. But yeah. I show up that way because, again, the same way I felt like when I saw the character of Damon, like, oh, my God, there are so many people. I remember just being positive and just how it felt. Like, I didn't see anybody. It was when we were still calling it the monster in Philly. Mm. And I remember, like, my friend asking, me, like, you got the monster, child? And mm. I was like, yeah. And how it felt. Mm. Like, that yes was stigmatized. Um, and just, I, I felt just really like, you know, in the words of Silly, I was, no, I'm sorry, in the words of Miss Sophia, I was feeling mighty down and mighty low. <laughs> and like, yeah, I know what yeah. I needed to see. Like, and so as a person, like, who is living a healthy life, who is still young Trina, I was like, come on. Come on. Um, come on. But I feel like people needed to see that. <laughs> like, people need to see you. Like, I'm going to say that I'm HIV positive, but that's not the definition. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. exactly. define me. I'm, I'm that end. I'm yeah. that plus. That exists. And on top of that, I'm still out here dating regular. Yes. Y'all ain't got no man. I don't have no man. Yes. Like all the Hello. things I'm saying, we, yes. we we out here, the career ain't changed. Nothing yeah. has changed for us. And I believe that that's important to have that representation. And yeah. then also, even in that space, still give people permission to like, and you have agency. And Hello. that agency is you get to decide whether your life is that or your life is like, mind your business. Hello. <laughs> True autonomy. Period. <laughs> yes. yes. That's exactly. There it is. <laughs> You there it is. is. True autonomy. There it is. Yeah. True autonomy. True autonomy. Absolutely. True autonomy. Yes. I want to ask you something because yeah. it's something that was on my mind and it, and it does lend to the topic. We've had people come on the show who are younger and we, we talked about how you and Ricky's relationship, the characters in Ricky's relationship progressed. Ryan is not Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan is not Damon, y'all. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan please say that. Play. They're going to be like, Ryan! Yeah. Like, Damon. So, Damon. So. Damon. Um, mm-hmm. but, but we talked about how, you know, their character progressed. And so, you know, they, they the character ends up with Pray Tell. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of reasons why this became, like, yeah, Ricky. beneficial. Ricky's character. Ricky's character. Yes. Um, ends up with Pray I'm Tell. I missed that. Yeah. yeah, Ricky's character. R- well, Ricky's character. <laughs> Damon was with Pray Tell. Ricky's I character. I missed that one. That would have been juicy. That would have been the love triangle, <laughs> child. Child. Ooh, get in here, get in here, get in here. Okay, uh, yeah. that would have started a writer's strike. Okay. Um, Ricky's character being with Fratel <laughs> and facing housing insecurity. Mm. So there's sort of this energy of like, I'm, I'm a new positive. I need some way to stay. Yeah. Am I in love or am I dependent? Yeah. That whole thing. I remember like when the sex scene started with that, like, and, and we really like, oh, okay, they're serious. It was a lot of mixed emotions. Yeah. I, I had a lot of mixed emotions because I, I always just would see young people like, who even within themselves didn't know if they were being preyed upon mm-hmm. or if, like, what this energy was. Mm-hmm. And I can't lie. I've talked to people who are older, some of my elders with HIV, and they're like, but but young people be on me. But they be wanting some way to stay. I feel preyed upon too. I'm just interested in, like, what your thoughts was around that dynamic. I think that in that fictional telling of um, codependency and relationship, because mm-hmm. that was a little bit of it. Plus, there was a sense of care and a sense of space that I just want to help out. But then, again, life is messy, right? Mm-hmm. And specifically in that, no, it, it don't even have. It doesn't have a time period, honey. It's just messy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that when oftentimes when we're in our pursuit of healing and journeying, that that is a part of it. I think for 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 queer people. LGBTQI plus people, nobody gives you a handbook to say that this is how you're supposed to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, here you go. <laughs> this is it. Because everything that we've been seeing, the things that we've been fed, have been from a heteronormative perspective. Yes, so at the end of the day, the <laughs> no, journey. We are not hetero. Yeah. <laughs> Heter- no, hetero. No, no, no. no. Hello, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, somebody. Um, I think that from that space is just like there is going to be a sense of trial and error. And, you know, there is some validity and truth Mm -hmm. in that telling. And I think that it also spoke to a lot of people's sense of shame and guilt of a whole bunch of things, you know, um, coming from broken homes, not having... um, People in, you know, well, a, a parent in or out of the household and just codependency. I think that oftentimes with queer relationships, and I'm writing a book specifically, well, a chapter about this, and just like the pursuit of just partnership for queer people. Yeah. 
you know, there is this sense of I I want to be saved, I want to be held, mm. yeah. that we have to cross some way, shape, or form. I, I, I don't think it's necessarily you jump over that. You have to go through that to see that you don't want that and that's not healthy. Yeah. Um, or people stay in, you know, whatever situation that they're in and it works for them. <laughs> um, you know, that's just what it is. True autonomy. Hello, true yeah. autonomy, honey. True autonomy. There's no handbook. Right. No you got, you get, yeah. So I think, um, yeah. My personal, um, just doing this life thing and going through relationships as well, uh, there is real, there's a real tether, an mm. emotional tether to trauma when it comes to codependency. And trauma. I'm in the process of doing that type of shadow work to realize for myself, how does that, how and why, where does that show up in my own life? And oftentimes I come to the space of just like, it always comes back to that shame and guilt word, them mm-hmm. words. Um, it comes from not feeling adequate. It, com- it comes from a space of just not feeling like you are being seen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to do that work, to be seen and to be in the process of seeing other people and having to be a, a leader of that march or leader, you, you know, I'm, I'm all about showing the imperfections because none of these leaders are without, yeah. without fault, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. And without flaw, excuse mm-hmm. me, not without fault. So that's how I feel about it. You know, still learning. I'm still learning. I'm 29, child. I ain't got oh, it all together. Good. Child, I ain't, yes, I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's Hello, my camera somebody. right there. Yeah, but yeah, that's it. Speaking of leadership, mm-hmm. now that we've established that you are not Damon, <laughs> that you are Brian Jamal Swain is we a person. Damon. We love Damon. Is a person. We love Damon. It's not the same person. It is not the same person. <laughs> it's not the same person. <laughs> Talk to us about who you are um, as an activist and an mm-hmm. advocate, and tell us a little about about this play one and two. Yeah, so you know, I ever since I was in school at Howard, one of my professors told me you? this. You know, hello, somebody. <laughs> I had to get it in. Hello, there. you know, I got to get it in yeah. there. Get in there. Get in there. <laughs> um, he said this phrase about being on the front lines of social change, and for me, my life naturally, and how I've just been in pursuit of the work that I do on off stage, on off the screen, has just been in the process of that. Mm. Um, I'm really one of those people where I just love to bridge the gap or to close the margins because oftentimes with celebrities, and I think that we're seeing this now with this strike, mm-hmm. you know, that we are like, or visible people, I hate the word celebrity. I hate that word too, but visible folk. Bridging the thing of like, it's obtainable. Your dreams are obtainable. You can have everything that you want if you just make some necessary adjustments, discipline, you know, um, love and a little bit of luck, a little bit of faith. That's pretty much about it. But just true discipline and true autonomy. Mm -hmm. So for me, that goes into my activism work Mm -hmm. as well because at the end of the day, I want people to see real folk. Yes. And real full people. I mean, the way that I show up up my social media, the way that I, the the causes that I'm tapped into, whether it's, you know, with It Gets Better Foundation, you know, creating this 48-hour love letter to all the young 16-plus kids, Mm -hmm. just having them see themselves, know that they are wanted out here. Um, we need y'all mm-hmm. um, from like, you know, being the first recipient of the Represent Pride Award from TV One and doing that type of work and doing the work yes. to make sure that queer voices are on that network as well. Congratulations. Because that's a black yeah. network. And oftentimes we don't see us yes. in black networks. Yes. yes. Hello, say it again. Hello. So at the end of the day, <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's just like trying to make sure that we are always being authentic. Yeah. Kind, hmm. well, in 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 pursuit of just full autonomy of just being seen. I just I I want so badly. My question for myself is, and for other Black queer people is, what does freedom dreaming look like? Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, what does dreaming? I'll give you my technology around freedom dreaming. Freedom dreaming is this idea, right, where I'm not bogged down by my circumstances. Okay. I can believe and be whoever I want to be mm-hmm. because I think that is a radical act for black people to think that they are in the future and have a future. Wow. Even that is and a, is a, have a future. Yes, even that is a revelatory mm-hmm. act in itself yeah. because a black person's future is unlike anyone that we've seen. Mm. So it's just like for me and black and brown queer folks specifically, I'm always in the margins of trying to be like, what does freedom dreaming look like? Because 
oftentimes we have had to be so hyper aware of what's going on around us. We have to move in a way, bob and weave, not say this thing, be an overachiever, do this. But what does it mean to actually just be? Yes. And, oh, I don't want to get emotional. But yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. To be. To be. You know, to as, be. As simple as that sounds. To be. It's, 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 it's a challenge. It's such a challenge. <laughs> yes. Every time that I ask any of my friends that question, they're just like, I just want to have a good day at work, child. And I'm like, okay, that's yeah. your truth today. That's yeah. your truth today. You and that's it. your truth. Yeah. Yeah, when you said it, that's what I was thinking. I'm yeah. like, I can't, I don't remember ever a time in my life where I had that, where I felt like I had the permission. Yeah. To be. And the idea that it's a privilege is already a problem. I mean, hey. it's, it's just, you know. That privilege word. And so for me, that's where my activism is tapped into, you know. You know, just really making sure that we have a future and that and that we are really holding on to the integrity of the people that have come before us um, and also making space for what we are giving to the yes. to the canon. What we dropping off. Yeah, what we dropping off. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Living in, in a one and two... And oh, one and two, yes. Living child. in a DMV. I, I want to touch on that because and tell us what it what about the play. And okay. Why, why so one and two um by Danier R. Love is this play um about this particular young man's uh it's semi-autobiographical from the playwright. Okay. Um he's been HIV positive, I think, probably for the last 15, 14 years. And this is kind of semi-autobiographical to his story. Um it's a fictional character called Dante. And we go through him moving through vignettes with his family. There's mom, there's kind of ex-boyfriend, there's Trey, there's a hookup moment. (laughs) And then it's all these things. But the gag is, is that just imagine that all three of us are the actors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's three different tracks, one, two, and three. The audience every night would pick who played that particular character. Oh. So that means that all three of us have to know. Know the parts. Front, back, and sideways. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, it was really it was really a powerful moment to heal some deep wounds in my own life. Mm. Um, but also it gave me the power to really be like, oh, I can do anything, especially yeah. doing something like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think it's one of those pieces where you get to see a very dramatized fictional portrayal of what it means to live. Um, with with the virus, with, live with HIV, um, but it also gives you some sense of joy. So there's a particular, no spoiler alert, but there's a particular attempted suicide at the end of it. Mm. But the thing about it is, is that the person that plays the role decides not to do that. Okay. I think that's what a really powerful message is just like, I'm not going to tell that story again. We need to tell a different story, mm. a different mm. story about not being bogged down by circumstance, but actually having autonomy. Mm-hmm. And it was really revelatory for me because w- what times do you get to have a very nuanced conversation about this? I mean, Pose did a marvelous job, right, about showing us that you can you can be a person who just so happens to have. Yeah. It's not Philadelphia where yeah. you know, or, or, or the normal heart. Mm-hmm. Or Angels in America, where when we mm-hmm. hit the status, it's like, oh, tragedy, mm-hmm. drama, whatever. You know, you get to see actual people living life and being in joy, trying to maneuver it, trying to figure it out. Yeah. And we don't get a lot of that in the canon. Yeah. We haven't had that in, in a lot. And so it gave me the space to really have a conversation about the nuanced, polylithic aspects of what it means to live a life, mm. period, period. Mm. HIV, is, HIV was a part of it, but it's not the fullness of the story. Yeah. And I think that goes back to what we were saying, right? Like having true autonomy, being able to send the margins of your own life, showing up for your life. That's your right. That's your birthright. That doesn't stop yeah. if something is a part of your journey. Um, and so that, that, that show was incredible. It was stressful. Because we only had three weeks to really tap in with it, like three weeks to rehearse it and then a month to do it. Ooh, Versus like it. I saw it when they premiered it in New York. They had a full month to preview it and do all these uh-huh. things. 
Honey, we had to do that thing and you got the DC pull that thing together in three weeks. Just that DC version. You know, talented. talent. Hey, hey, so it's yeah. just like I can do anything I at this said, point. You know what said, I mean? Hello. Yeah, hello. Talented. Hello. hello. As, as, a, as a person who's recognizing that you really are a leader in the community, oh, you have been you. a part of um, something that is iconic, which has made you iconic. Yes. Um, what call to action would you give to the community? Because people are listening to you um, when it kind of comes to destigmatizing that Yes, I am HIV positive mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. What calls to action would you leave us with? Oh, that's a deep question. That's heavy. That's a heavy one. But, but you heavy, so you got yeah, it. Yeah, I know, child. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Through Christ who strengthens me. Hello. And with his water that strengthens me as well. God bless. <laughs> no, um, this room temperature water. <laughs> temperature water. Um, mm. Your trauma isn't your responsibility, but your healing is. Mm. That's number one. Um, I think about this James Baldwin quote. I'm wearing my little James Baldwin ring right now. But he took. He says, it took me many years of vomiting up who I was told and have believed before I walked on this earth as though I belonged here. Mm. I do belong here. I have the right. I think that for young Queer folk, young people, black, brown, purple, green, yellow, orange, whatever. Take up your space. Yeah. Take up space. And for my babies that are, I sound like Monique, for my, for my babies. <laughs> Hi, my baby. Hey, my sweet babies. Yeah, um, <laughs> love you, girl. <laughs> um, I see you. I'm with you. I cannot wait to meet you. I cannot wait to see you out here doing the work that you are are being called to do. Um, Yeah, never stop showing up for your life. I just, I don't have anything prolific because I think that um, all of our experiences are unique to us. Mm -hmm. I do believe that there is something powerful in knowing that healing is a journey, is not a stop. It is a full life journey um, that has its many roads up and down, back and forth, front and back, Mm -hmm. relapses, this, that, whatever the case may be. But no matter if you're doing the journey, if you're waking up to say, I want to be better, I'm going to be better. That's enough to keep moving forward. Mm. Um, And know that there there is a beautiful life waiting, waiting for you to say yes to knowing that what you're seeking is also seeking you. And at the moment of commitment, the universe conspires to assist you. Hmm. So yeah, that's, that's I what I got. It was, it was, it was <laughs> hello? Oh, I, goodness. I, I, amen. I, yes. I don't know what I'm supposed to say after that, right? Because it was the, I'm not trying to get deep. Right. But then, and they got deep. Deep. Yeah, here we are, right? Deep. Okay. But thank you for speaking Come on, to Janet. me, because I don't deep. know about y'all, but that message, I felt every single bit of it. Yes. Thank you. So, um, Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much um, for joining us in a conversation yeah. of transfer. You got transferred. Don't you? you got a transfer. I just want to be like, hey, hey, hey. don't leave me out. <laughs> Um, and so thank you for, you know, coming in and just to kind of share some space, yeah. right? And share knowledge and opinion, right? Which is so greatly received thank you. Um, and appreciated. Um, what I heard you say and what I need for them to hear you say is that true autonomy is important. Yeah. Know who you are so that you can just be, mm-hmm. right? Your trauma isn't your fault, but your healing is. Healing takes time is what I tell people. Yeah. So take your time so yes. that you can do it right. Yes. Uh, another great episode of Positive Voices, folks. You can head mm. on over to linkudmv.org. Put in your zip code. Real simple. Put your zip code in and it'll tell you all of the resources that are around you so that you can get the care that you need because our good brother, Ryan Jamal Swain, has just told us that healing is on you. So mm. do what you need to do. Head to link you. Also, more episodes. You're going to be like, well, where's my other content here? What are they talking about? <laughs> Head on over to dcnshiv.org. You can find more episodes, more um, resources, and our social media stuff too. So get with us. Be, get found. Just be. Be. <laughs> That's get free. it. Get free, we'll honey. We'll catch you get guys free. on another episode, Positive Voices. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in.